We're here with the legend, the GOAT, whatever you want to call him, Ron Polk. Um, Coach, the cigars. And you were well known for your cigars at very random times during baseball games or meeting, whatever it is, you're going to light your cigar. If it's, if it's legal. No. If, if it's legal. <laughs> if it's legal. <laughs> well, no, that's not true because in Duty Noble, it, it's not legal. Yeah, and, and, okay. But your name's on <laughs> the stadium, so we'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you a freebie there. But how'd it start? How'd the cigar start? Well, when you mention GOAT, it's an amazing story. I, sometimes, <laughs> at U, sometimes at UAB, if a kid gets a good grade point average and he's not a good student, I said, if you get a 3.0 grade, grade point average, you're going to have a cigar with Coach Polk. And the kids you know, wanted to have a cigar. And Ryan Ruggles was the first guy, a pitcher there, and so I, he lights a cigar up and I light my cigar up and he, he takes his selfie, you know, I'm not much into selfies. He takes a picture of me and him and cigar. I said, what, what are you doing? I said, I'm gonna send it to my mom and dad. And it's my, my f people will follow me. I said, oh. And so I looked at it, on the bottom he printed out, <coughs> I'm having a cigar with a goat. I didn't know what a goat was. I'm I mean, I never heard of that. I never heard of it ever. I said, Ryan, why? It isn't you. I said, why would you call me a goat? He said, Coach, that's good. I said, what, what does that mean? He said, greatest of all time. I said, I, wow, I didn't know that. That's how naive I am. I'm not in the social media stuff. Well, anyway, nowadays, and I'm kind of jealous of the college coaches now in the SEC, and they not only have a head coach and two full-time assistant volunteer, unfortunately not a third assistant. They have a director of player personnel, they have a, uh, um, they have a director of, of uh, the, I guess they call it a baseball operations director, and they have a director of quality control, they have analytical directors, they have full-time trainers. We didn't have that. I mean, we basically had to handle the travel, the Sky Street program, the dugout club, the host family program, which we started in Mississippi State, foster parent program. We had to do everything, including whenever we could to get on the road recruiting. Mm -hmm. And I used to do a lot of recruiting uh, between games, never missed a practice. I always told our recruits, I will always be at every practice I could possibly be at, and our coaches would not be on the road recruiting when we're playing games. And I, I thought that was important for them to know that because a lot of times you play a game with another college and there's only one coach there, the rest of them are on the road. So I was on the road constantly, a lot of speaking, a lot of Bulldog Club meetings, alumni meetings, coming back at two or three in the morning. And I'll be honest with you, there was times I was driving back to Starkville, whether to see a game or in-house visit or signing a boy. I mean, I, I almost lost my life two or three times going off the road. And uh, I kept slapping myself and the window opening and loud music. I mean, just to stay awake. You and listening to loud music? Well, not loud music. Loud Fox News stuff, you know. <laughs> uh, whatever, anything to stay awake. Coffee, tea, whatever. Because I know I had to get up early because I had a meeting or I had to you know, put a practice schedule together. This had to be about 45 or 50 years ago. I can't tell you what year. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm just having a hard time, and I didn't want to pull off the side of the road and sleep because it's not safe, and I had to get back to Starkville to get some sleep. And all of a sudden, I pulled into a grocery store in some country town, maybe Alabama or Tennessee, I don't know, maybe in Mississippi, and I, I bought some, maybe some chips or something, you know, to eat, mm -hmm. and there was a, and I'd always heard this, Coach, you gotta do something with your hands, like smoke cigarettes or maybe a cigar or something. And I said, no, I don't want it. I never had a cigarette in my mouth. I don't chew tobacco, nothing. And I, and, I, and I went to pay, and I can still vividly remember a lady at the cash register, and there was a little cigar, you know, a little cigar thing. I mean, cigars. And I said, ma'am, uh, let, me, let me have one of those cigars. I didn't even have matches. I didn't have matches. I said, do you have any matches for this? I never had a cigar in my mouth. I put that cigar in, Jake, and I drove all the way back to Starkville and never, never was sleepy again. And that's how it started. Well, okay, so it's to stay awake. To stay awake. Okay, well there you have it, Yeah. cigars. Well, I can't guarantee it's gonna solve all people who are about to sleep in the car driving. 
but it, it helped me. And I mean, it's still time. I'm on the road a lot speaking, and I have to drive back. And you know, I'm, I'm so used to cigars now, I still have a tough time staying awake. But mm -hmm. I'm getting a little bit older now, so I, I probably plan my schedule a little better. There you go. Cigars to stay awake. Mm -hmm.